YouTube is full of amateur musicians who record themselves playing piano with their phones. I think it's great that people are performing and getting their musical ideas out into the world. But that should not be confused with a proper recording setup and how much that can bring your music to life. As an example, I recently recorded my good friend JF playing Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy. JF is a phenomenal pianist with his doctorate in piano performance. You can find some of his performances on his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Here's the setup we were using. JF's phone was propped on a music stand, which is something many amateur musicians do to record themselves. But to see what you're recording, you have to use the selfie camera, which on most phones is of a far inferior quality to the rear camera. Phone microphones have improved hugely in the last decade or so, but they still have their limitations. Added to this, the microphone is often on the bottom of the phone, which is blocked by the edge of the music stand. And even if the phone has a microphone at the top, you're putting it right next to this big, tinny sound reflector. Notice that it's also in portrait orientation, which is gaining popularity on Instagram and for YouTube shorts, but is really not ideal for capturing a performance. Have a look and listen to the quality we got from the phone. Above JF's head, I mounted my phone on a choir boom stand with a different phone mount that allows me to use the rear camera. This was to capture the full keyboard. This is a slightly older phone, but also a slightly higher model, and you can hear and see the major quality difference. As a proper main camera, we used a Canon Legria camcorder set up on a tripod. It still doesn't get great sound quality, but has much better quality video than the phone cameras, particularly when it comes to focus. For fun, we added a third camera just at the edge of the piano facing along the length of the keyboard. This is a high quality DSLR, the Fujifilm X-T100. I haven't quite figured out the autofocus settings on this camera, which sometimes makes his hands slide in and out of focus. This also goes to show that it's not just about having the best gear, but really knowing how to use it. And the best way to learn how to use gear is to experiment, which is what this project was all about. We also experimented with some different microphone setups. As a starting point for a microphone, we have an SE2200A in front of the piano, about one and a half meters away from the piano. This is a studio condenser microphone, and so it has a very flat frequency response and picks up a lot of detail. Another two meters away are a stereo pair of AKG C1000Ss in ORTF format. Being a bit further away, they pick up more of the room sound than the SE2200A and provide some ambience. Inside the piano, we have two Shure SM57s spaced apart and pointing at the strings quite close to the hammers. These can give an intimate, percussive quality that is often good for pop piano recordings, while also giving a wide sound due to the space between the microphones. Now we can experiment with the different sets of microphones, as well as combinations of each. Here is the single SE2200A sound. Notice that since it is a single microphone, we have a mono sound, which feels like it's right in front of you, but also flat and dead on its own. Now the AKG C1000S pair, for more of the ambient sound. Notice also the immediate difference between mono and stereo. Now the SM57 pair.
the SM57 pair can be improved by delaying them by a few milliseconds and adding the SE2200A to bring the sound together in the middle. Or we could use the SE2200A with the C1000S pair to have a more classical sound and capture the room. Or we could use them all together. Which is your favourite sound? Feel free to leave a comment. Now of course we can still add reverb if we want to, transitions between camera angles, titles and so on. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out the complete video on JF's channel. So, we could have this, or the more professional look, this. I hope you've enjoyed this video, which is very different to my normal tutorial videos. JF and I certainly had fun experimenting with the different camera angles and microphone possibilities.